I know that a lot of people uh, have commented to us over the years that, you know, they don't do end times. They don't talk about end times because they find it too deep, too hard, too extreme, too fundamental. And uh, I just wanted to address this very briefly. We have here Dr. James Dobson recently said the fall of Western civilization is at hand. Would you call Dr. James Dobson, uh, founder of Focus on the Family, a bit too extreme? No. He's a pretty even keeled, respectable voice in the body of Christ. And if you're not listening to us, maybe you would listen to him because he discerns the time. And there are many voices in the body of Christ that is discerning the time. I know that there are many Christian channels out there and you can watch anything, but of all the things to be watching, all the things to be promoting and plugging, I just recently saw you know, some Christian um, sent out a thing that said, you know, these are like the five best YouTube channels out there, recommends them. And uh, you know, some of them have like 2,000 followers, 8,000 followers, and I'm not bagging that. You know, we all have to start somewhere. But I'm thinking, hang on a second. You know, we're, we're at 100,000 followers. But why do we not always get the you know, accolades of our fellow peers? Because there's such a fear and such an anti-end time sentiment among the church. It's almost as if people feel like, oh, if it's the end time, we can't live. We never said that. If, it's, if your God called you to study, you study and get the best grades, and if you do that, you pass your exam and Jesus comes back, you'll get your reward. If you're supposed to, you know, invent something, build a building, develop property, whatever it is that you're supposed to do, raise your kids, all right? If you do that to the best of your ability and you're obeying God in your call, it doesn't matter really when he comes, you will be rewarded for obeying him and being faithful to him. So we never have this fatalistic teaching. I think our church people understand that. But a lot of people out there are afraid. So when it's end time, they right away they prejudge. First they say it must be about when the rapture is. We hardly talk about that. Today we will. Um, and then a lot of people just get afraid like they can't live uh, today. No, I think Dr. James Dobson is aware that we still have to build wonderful, strong, healthy Christian families in the church. We want to do that, right, even if it's the end time. Yeah, and he's doing that and he's built a great organization. But you can't turn a blind eye and just say, oh, nothing is happening, none of the signs are here, everything is going as it ever was since the, since the creation of the world. That would be absolute blindness. We need to wake up to the time. Like the ten virgins were asleep, we need to wake up. How about this respectable man of God, Billy Graham? You know, he wrote or he published in 2010, and I think 2010 was a key year in the end times, right? The Haiti earthquake, many things happened in 2010 that seemed to be a pivot point. And interestingly, Billy Graham, who's been soul winning, you know, more than most of us, right? All these years, he signaled that 2010, storm warning. Do you call Billy Graham a bit extreme? Right? I, I don't, you don't, you know, maybe somebody does, but I think most people don't. I think he's been a, one of the very uh, respected voices for the body of Christ. And he said this back in 2010, there is only one answer to the travail of this present age, and it is found in the ageless pages of God's word, the Bible. The Bible repeatedly tells us that someday Christ will return, not in weakness, the way he came the first time, but with power and glory and with great authority. We should be teaching our people Jesus is coming back, his return is near. We don't have to be dogmatic about when, but we shouldn't be completely oblivious to the signs of the time. That's how many people miss the first coming of Jesus Christ. What a tragedy that was. Then Billy Graham updated what he said in 2013 to World Net Daily, he wrote, there's a great deal to say in the Bible about the signs we're to watch for and when these signs are, uh, when these signs all converge at one place, we can be sure that we're close to the end of the age. And those signs, in my judgment, are converging now for the first time since Jesus made those predictions. Are we on some fringe? Are we on a tangent? Is this some fundamental crazy thing? Hey, 
the leaders of the body of Christ are crying out. We're sounding the shofar. And I hope pastors out there who've been turned off or maybe uh, were disappointed back in the 80s or the 70s and heard so much teaching and nothing happened, please never be turned off to prophecy. This is part of God's word. And prophecy is given to encourage us and also to prove God's word is true and to encourage us that he's coming soon. We should live like that. So I think this is a bit extreme. To see all that God is doing and to see all that the devil's doing, to see the persecution of the Christians in the Middle East, the absolute chaos that's going on, uh, reaching even into Europe, and terrorism going on everywhere, even in Australia. And to say, welcome to nobody cares. Planet Earth, nobody cares. We're all indifferent. We come to church, we don't care when the rapture could possibly happen, we don't care. I think that it, that is such an extreme. That is a personal extreme, a theological extreme. It is such an extreme risk to take, to say, I will ignore all the warning signs. I'm just gonna keep bulldozing ahead, like running towards a cliff, and not caring about how I live my life now. That to me, in my humble opinion, that to me is too extreme for me to follow. They accepted him, but gave him a hard time, but accepted him, Jesus. So Yeshua is the Messiah. This Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah. The Messiah. And we know one of the proofs is Isaiah 53. Today we want to talk about the end of evil. However, you're on the other side and you are perpetrating terrorism. He's called the Messiah. That's who he is in English. That's his role of corrupt leaders and evil dictators. That's a Messiah. Can you understand that? Now, 2,000 years to mean the bringing of peace. Now is coming back to right the wrongs is people with a third time, God said, judge the world by a global flood.